we'll see if the floodgates open. Gersich on goal! Yes, sir! Shane Gersich makes it two! A road win over a top 10 opponent, not a bad way to wrap up one of the most successful calendar years in North Dakota hockey history. Welcome to North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry. I'm Alex Center. Coming up, we're going to take you to upstate New York for all the highlights of UND's New Year's Eve matchup against Union. Look ahead at what's to come in the second half of the season and take you inside the penalty shot mindset of both shooter and goalie, all alongside the head coach of UND men's hockey. Brad Berry and Brad, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. I know in the midst of a season it's tough to take time to look back, but 2016 was the calendar year itself, a really special year for you and this program. What a great way to wrap up the year with a big win over Union as well. Yeah, it was huge. It was our last non-conference game, uh, and again, uh, we finished 7-2-2, two two, which was respectable in non-conference, but you know, looking back at 2016, who can forget about the year that we won a national championship, and that's behind us, and we're trying to win another one now. Yeah, definitely. Um, that will pick up, of course, in the weeks to come. It had been a couple of weeks since your last game, December 10th against Western Michigan. I know that that's a long time between contests. You guys have had a chance to rest up a little bit, but certainly not sitting on your hands this entire time. No, and again, uh, you know, uh, we won the Friday night game against Western and came out on Saturday and had a chance to win that one too, and that one got away from us, and that wasn't a very good feeling uh, leaving for Christmas, and our guys knew that, and uh, our guys went home they they rested uh, they got mentally re and physically recharged again and uh, you could tell that they were back with a rejuvenated spirit. Yeah, a couple of guys busy with World Juniors as well. Nice to see Matei Tomek and Tyson Jost both really showing their stuff up in Canada. Yeah, absolutely. With uh, Tyson being on Team Canada and Matei on uh, Slovakian team, a uh, great opportunity to play within their their age group uh, at the international level. And uh, again, uh, it's uh, it's tough to have them away from our group, but uh, they'll be great players in the second half for us. Yeah, UND not exactly easing back into a regular season play, a tough matchup against 2014 national champion Union. We'll take you through the highlights coming up next. North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry on Midco Sports Network is presented by the University of North Dakota. back. We're recapping North Dakota's game against number 10 Union with the head coach Brad Berry. And Brad, this essentially was the back half of a series that you had started earlier in the month in New York against Boston College. Kind of a unique one-off venue to, to go back out to Schenectady and play yeah. a team like Union. Yeah, obviously scheduled a few years ago these two different games and uh, you know was, our guys had a great experience and I know our fans did in uh, Madison Square in New York. But to go out to a venue like the Frank Mesa Arena and uh, back where the grassroots of college hockey started, uh, it, it was great. Uh, Rick Bennett's uh, program has been tremendous every year, and it was a tough opponent that we faced uh, in, in Union. You mentioned the Mesa Rink, again, a very different facility than what you're used to playing in front yeah. of 11,000 people. There's only about 2,500 or so could fit into the old barn. Yeah. An afternoon start time. There are a lot of unique things about this trip to upstate New York. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, obviously going out there, uh, first of all, it's uh, you know, a very prestigious campus yeah. and, and you know and college there and uh, and they won a national championship a couple of years ago coming off of that and they have a really good team again this year and uh, again we went in there knowing that uh, we had to win our last uh, non-conference game and our guys went in there with a uh, with a mindset and and they came out with a victory and uh, again we're gonna have to need that in the second half of the season yeah Frank Messerink an old-school facility but this Union yeah. team had a lot of success in it recently the Dutchman again winners of six straight coming in they were ranked fourth in the pairwise and featured the country's top two scores including the leading scorer Mike Vecchioni but you would get the upper hands almost as early as possible, right off the opening face-off. Quick dump in from Shane Gersich. Rhett Gardner gets there first and finds Austin Paganski wide open in front of the net. A huge goal, just 11 seconds in. Coach. Yeah, you know what? We tried to get the puck moving north right away on the face-off win, and, and the forecheck really set this up with uh, Austin going in there and uh, Rhett uh, knowing the reverse was coming, and uh, they, they executed on a great play there. Sixth of the season for Pogo. Moments after the goal, the Dutchman would get an opportunity in their own. A couple of decent chances pop up for Union off the faceoff for Cam Johnson there on every occasion. Yeah, you know what? Uh, they're a dangerous team. They have a lot of offensive players, and when they got the puck up top, uh, they made a play there, and uh, Cam came up for the stop. Midway through the first, now great shorthanded chance there from John Simonson. Good stop from Alex Sakelaropoulos. 
little bit later, though, another opportunity here. Pagansky off the bar, a great chance to make it 2-0. Yeah, good entry play there, and obviously getting a puck on the net. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't go down from the bar in the net, but uh, nonetheless, good play. Union would have a couple of good chances late in the first to even the score. Quick neutral zone turnover that they nearly take advantage of. A good stop by Cam on the breakaway. A little later, another giveaway at Central Ice. Ryan Scarfo, a great breakaway chance, but another stop by Cam. Yeah, well, you know, uh, two different plays, but kind of a common theme there about turning pucks over in the neutral zone. And again, when you turn pucks over and you don't manage a puck, uh, that's what happens against a good team. The yeah, Union would outshoot you 14-9 in the opening frame. Union on the power play here after there was a hooking call on that breakaway chance. Johnson, though, shutting the door to keep it 1-0 after the first. Neither side really had many chances to be going to the second. Really felt like the game slowed down a little bit. Uh, talk about what you did to maintain momentum going into the second point. Well, I think we controlled the puck. I think the second period, we we did uh, we pushed the puck north. We got it into their end of the rink, and we started getting pucks to the net and protecting pucks once we got in there. So I think there was a little slow for a fact that we uh, we, we held on to pucks, and uh, we controlled the game for the second period. The outshot Union 10-6 to six in that second couple of good chances there from Chris Wilkie, who had four shots on the night. Shane Gersich here comes up with a turnover, nearly puts one in. Shane with six shots on net this evening. Yeah, and on that play there was a four check with good sticks on the ice. Uh, almost a, coming out into the third. Again, it's still up one nothing at this point. Another good start. Really a similar play that you see the open game with. Pagansky driving to the net on the dump in, finding Shinger. It's almost a carbon copy of goal number one. Yep, and again, another good four check with a good stick on the ice. And, uh, you know, that created our offense here in Union was our four check getting pucks deep below the goal line. and. Uh, creating them to turn pucks over. Shane's now scored in three straight games. He's in a three-way tie for the NCHC goals lead. The guy that led the nation in goals and points coming in right there, Mike Vecchioni, not a lot of opportunities for him. Did a great job of shutting him down, but other members of this Dutchman crew trying to make a difference. Good play by just this defensive core to keep it at one nothing. Yeah, you know what? Uh, we got a shot blocked, and uh, you know they came back on transition, got a play to the net. But you know they're pressing in the third period. They're down by a couple goals here, and they uh, they tried to try to create offense by pressing a little bit. You would get some chances as well. Again, Shane Gersic a moment ago with the shot on goal. Good chance there from Ludwig Hoff. It felt like the game really opened up in those final 10 minutes. Yeah, it did. And again, it, you know, like we talked about, you know, they're going to try to take chances to try to get a goal here. And if they do that, we got to be patient and make sure that we play the right way. And we did. We got opportunities and we uh, we didn't let our foot off the gas. Yeah, five minutes left there. It looks like you almost get one in. Trevor Olson thinks you've scored the puck. Looked like it had crossed the, uh, the line, but the whistle had blown. Kept it at two nothing at that point, and then with three minutes left, a big goal there by Spencer Fu to make it two to one. Yeah, they pulled the goalie a little bit early. They're down by a couple, and uh, they won a face off and got it back. And they had a high tip uh, play going on there. We didn't get the stick in front of the net, and uh, they capitalized. And now we're in a game. Yeah, Cobb was back in it certainly at that point. A huge save here from Cam, a point blank shot that he is able to stop from Ryan Walker to keep it at two to one, and that would lead to this with just a couple of seconds left. Austin Pagansky, one of the more I don't know elaborate. Empty net goals you're going to see from about 180 feet away to ice it at 3-1. to one. Yeah, he, uh, I don't know, he uh, did a great job of banking it off the board. So, uh, you know, that, that's a tough play. He made a great play to uh, to capitalize uh, on the play and get uh, get us the win for a 3-1 win. Yeah, as you said, a huge goal there. That caps off a three-point performance for Pogo. The second three-pointer in the last three games for him. You get a priceless 3-1 road victory against one of the country's hottest teams. 32 saves for Cam on 33 shots, five points from your top line, and North Dakota earns their 10th win of the year to round out the non-conference season and the calendar year as well. I thought it was huge to get after him right away like we did, scoring in the first shift. That's always a big momentum booster, especially on the road to get the uh, crowd out of it and our guys going, it's huge. So I think uh, playing uh, playing good right away and carrying it throout the whole game, I think it was a full 60 or 60 minute effort from our team and that's what we got to do the rest of the year. Our defensive play was unbelievable today, you know, with guys picking up sticks and, um, you know, not letting get loose change and not letting get backdoor tap-ins and all that. So, um, you know, we, we did an unbelievable job defensively today and, uh, you know, they made my job easy just stopping the puck and I didn't really have to worry about too much after that. Union had that had a big line there, uh, some really skilled players that know how to score, and uh, I thought we were pretty hard on them all night. This team's a good team; they're they're ranked really high, and it was it was a big uh, game on our schedule. So we really wanted that win. We got it, and uh, we couldn't be happier about it to start our uh, second half of the season on the right foot. From here on out, it's just going to be a war, and every weekend's going to be a war. We know that we got a good team coming up next weekend in Omaha, and um, you know we're going to be ready for it, and we're excited for the second half, and um, you know we're going to make our push here. 
So North Dakota gets the three to one win. A really great performance, coach, from from top to bottom and for all 60 minutes. Yeah, it was. It was a total team win. Uh, you know, a couple things that you saw in the game: guys selling out on their bodies and blocking shots. That was a big deal. Uh, that was contagious. There was more than one guy doing that. You know, the other thing is we played with some energy and some passion on our forecheck, which resulted in some offense for us. So it was a lot of good things that we have to build on. Yeah, nice job with the penalty kill as well. Five for five. Yeah. You shut down a very offensive-minded team, really, for the entire night. Yeah, penalty kill did a great job. They were aggressive up ice in zone, and uh, they didn't really give them a chance to have a lot of good looks. And when they did, uh, Cam was there to make the save. So, again, the penalty kill was huge. Yeah, hard to quantify the importance of a win like this, but certainly to go on the road to beat a top 10 team, team again that was fourth in the pairwise. Yeah. This is huge for you guys moving into conference play. Yeah, now. it was. And again, like I go back to you know our last game against Western Michigan before the hot break. That's not the way we wanted to end the first half, and our guys knew that, and they have a lot of pride, and they came back in there, and and it, it was a total team win. So again, uh, looking forward to this weekend. We got to make sure that we play that exact same way. Yeah, three one win, a nice way to wrap up again the calendar year and to get the second half of the season started. We're going to talk about that second half when we come back here on. North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry. The first half of the season is now in the books for North Dakota Hockey and head coach Brad Berry. And Brad now 19 games in to this season. It's been, there may be some times of growing pains early in the year for this young team, but you can certainly see the growth this group has made. Yeah, absolutely. New group coming in, uh, finding their roles. Uh, you know, consistency is the biggest thing in our group that we're getting after right now. And, uh, you know, a lot of positive things coming out of Union. We have to build on that and keep taking steps forward uh, every day in practice. Can't waste a day. You uh, have to keep taking steps forward. Yeah, you mentioned the consistency. Is there a specific area where you would like to see this team improve now over the next couple of weeks? Yeah, I think, you know, we've had a little success now for one game success. Uh, you know, we've got to try to build that and not let off the gas. Uh, you know, it seems like in the first half of the year we had a little success. You know, I think we got a little bit happy with ourselves and then we take a step back. We got to make sure the mindset that we start each day and each practice new and, and, and uh, it's a clean slate. That was one thing. And the other thing is uh, our specialty teams. I think we have to, we did a great job on our penalty kill to win us a game. We have to do that with our power play and our penalty kill in the second half. Special teams will be key in the second half of the season. It's easy to forget sometimes this team has had to weather the end of this non-conference season without Brock Besser, who's missed the last six games with that wrist injury, losing Tyson Joes for the last two on World Juniors duty. It really has shown the depth of this team to be able to step up without two first-round draft picks in the lineup the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I can't say enough about that. And that's having the team first mentality. And you know, we, we use the word culture strongly in our group. We have a strong culture here that it doesn't matter who's in the lineup. Whoever's going to go in the lineup is going to do the job. And that's uh, uh, that's the beauty and special thing about North Dakota hockey. Yeah, regardless of how Team Canada plays out with, with Tyson Jones, he's going to be back in time for the Omaha series, which is great. Any yeah. idea when Brock will be back on the ice? You know what? He's he's back with us now. He's practicing. He's skating. Uh, we're going to take it day by day here. Sure. But you know, from what we've seen, it's not going to be too too long. Yeah, well, that's good news, certainly, for yeah. North Dakota fans. Uh, the road trip now for you to UNO coming up this weekend, the Friday, Saturday tilt. That starts the stretch of five straight weekends with conference opponents. You get a bye week in there in the middle of February, then three more to round out the regular season. Talk about how you feel the second half shakes out from a scheduling standpoint. Well, again, that's all uh, conference games, and they're so important not only for your standings to try to get home ice, which is a goal of ours, mm -hmm. but also for the pairwise rankings to remain in the top uh, part of the pairwise for the postseason play. So, again, each and every game is very important. You know, you look at it, and, and there's, uh, I believe, 16 games left in, in, our, in our second half of the season before the playoffs. The biggest thing for us is not getting too far ahead of ourselves. We have to make sure that we break it down within a weekend, and within that is uh, the first game, and that's Friday night in Omaha. And you bet. You mentioned getting home ice, which is so huge, trying to be one of those top four seeds. You're currently sixth right now, but just a couple of points separate you in third place. The top two, when you look at what Duluth and what Denver have done this year, have a bit of a gap, but as you mentioned, 16 games left. There's still a ton of time left in this regular the season to make up that ground. Yeah, 100%. And I think what you, you look at too is the top four teams in our league have played two more games than the bottom four teams yeah. have. So again, when games are worth three points apiece, you know, you have to win those games. But uh, we need to make up some points, and we have two games at hand, and we gotta got to get after right away. Yeah, you mentioned those two games coming up yeah. against Omaha. Again, yeah. Dean Blaze, a guy, obviously, that everybody around here knows really well. What do you know about the group that he's assembled this year? You know, they play with pace. They play hard. They're a typical Dean Blaze team that they, uh, you, know, you know, the words he used when he coached here was speed kills. I mean, he, he likes a team that gets up and goes and, and goes from there. So, again, we know that we're going into a building where it's going to be fast and furious, and we got to make sure that we play the same way. Yeah, great opportunity to keep that momentum going from the Union Series. Coach, best of luck this weekend against the Mavericks. Safe travels. We'll talk about it with you next week. Thanks, Alex. Well, thanks, Coach. Coming up next, shootouts don't happen very often, but when they do, they leave a mark. We're going to go into the mindset of the shootout with the goalies and the shooters. Coming up next. Welcome 
back. Well, penalty shots and shootouts don't happen very often in college hockey, but when they do, they leave a lasting impression, certainly on fans and players alike. We had a chance to catch up with some of the most experienced shootout participants on the UND bench. Here's what they had to say about the process. When you think of shootout, you think of the pressure on the uh, goalie and the skater, obviously. It's kind of that one point in the game where you know all eyes are on and you get a chance to shine. It's an exciting thing for, I think, all the fans. It's a little bit nerve-wracking, maybe for some guys on the team. You know, you want to score and help out the team, and uh, there's probably a lot of nerves going on. Uh, I like to have the puck in my stick in games and stuff, so when uh, ever there's a penalty shot or a shootout, I always uh, hope that I get to go. There's a million things that go into it. I don't even think I could, I could repeat everything that goes through my head when someone's coming down on me, but it's definitely just making the read on whether you think he's going to shoot or whether he's, he's going to deke and, and then just reading and adjusting from there. Once you kind of get within that last six to seven feet, you're kind of, it's all instinct and all reaction. So I think in the initial steps, you're kind of making reads and trying to figure out what's going on. But when it comes down to when that shot's actually taken, it's pure reaction. You know, just coming down to me personally, I just try and read the goalie and see what's open. But uh, I do my I do my same move no matter what. You have your you know a few go-to moves that you're maybe gonna try. I think uh, you maybe think of a move before you're gonna go down. But at the same time, you gotta you gotta be able to read and react. If the goalie makes the first move, then you might have to alter your. Uh, your idea on what you're going to do to score a goal, but uh, sometimes you just kind of got to go and uh, don't second guess yourself and just make a good good play and hopefully get a shot on that. It's slowed down, but at the same time, it's pretty fast. You got to read and react pretty quick and uh, I'll uh, get the puck in the net. I would say the pressure is probably on the shooter. As opposed to in practice, it's amazing how much more they squeeze the stick in the games and they keep it simpler. And you can almost count on that, honestly. I personally think uh, the shooter, uh, just because uh, pressure's on them to score uh, and the whole team's kind of banking on them, but I mean, I guess the whole team's banking on the goalie to save it. Obviously, if we're shooting, uh, it's probably, probably us, but if, if Cam's in net there, it's probably him, right? You know, I know all the guys look forward to the to the Thursday shootouts and the coaches going on, which makes it pretty pretty interesting, pretty fun. I don't know if Bubs is just shooting into the pads once in a while to give our goalies confidence or what. There's a few guys that have have some uh, moves in their bag, I'd say. Josie's got a couple little sneaky moves. Josie's pretty good. He's got some like mohawk move that the goalie just can't really figure out. I think you know Josie's pretty creative with the puck, so he's probably my number one. Uh, I think Josie's got some sweet moves. Uh, Ludwig Hoff has some sweet moves. Yanner actually has a, a really quick release, and you know sometimes he goes down there and tries to make a move when he just needs to stick to shooting. Joel Janetuinen can have some sweet moves. Shane's got really quick hands that. He's been pretty hot this year. I would say the junior class isn't special because everyone knows Pogo goes to his backhand every time. Pogo's backhand, he's been trying it this year, but I think the goal has kind of caught on to him. But we got a lot of guys that can score, and it always, always makes for a fun Thursday. Obviously, it's one-on-one -on -one with you and the goalie, so uh, it's, it's pretty much up to you to you know, help your team win the game, and uh, you know, they're, they're key moments that you, you get scoring. It's definitely uh, uh, a moment uh, you kind of got to take in because uh, it doesn't last that long. It's a one-on-one, -on -one. it doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it's a pretty surreal moment and a lot of uh, excitement and see what happens. It's one-on-one, -on -one. it's what you live for. UND is yet to feature in a shootout this season. It only competed in one all of last year. The NCHC overtime format change, a big reason for the decline in shootouts this season. Stick around, we're going to talk you through the upcoming series for North Dakota against Omaha when we come back. North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry on Midco Sports Network is presented by the University of North Dakota.
North Dakota kicks off 2017 with a trip south on I-29 to take on former head coach Dean Blaze and the Omaha Mavericks. UND took three of four from the Mavs last season, including a two-game sweep at Baxter Arena in late February. Both Friday and Saturday's games start at 7 p.m. We'll have the highlights and reaction from the UNO series coming up on our next edition of North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry. Until then, I'm Alex Seinerts. Happy New Year and thanks for watching.